They said it couldn't be built. They said it shouldn't run at speed. I reckon that magic 100 mile an hour is going to be in the bag. Oh, come on, come on! No! They said the steam age was dead. What a big steam train of us. This is the story of how Tornado was tamed and taken to the top. Keep going! A steam locomotive on a mission. Tornado, a peppercorn class A1 Pacific, arrives in Doncaster. It's a spiritual homecoming. The class was designed in the town. Now it's base camp for a thrilling railway adventure. It's travelled up from London, along with Hugh Parker, one of the team of volunteers who keep it on the rails. If you were sitting where I am, you'd feel the heat coming out of there. It's uh, very hot indeed. Once alight, managing the fire is an essential chore. If the loco has been cold, we light a small warming fire and take as long as we can to bring it round into steam to allow the boiler to evenly. And even off the footplate, there's a need for elbow grease. Cleaning isn't just for cleaning's sake. All the oil and grease from the uh, axle boxes and from the front end all has been thrown back over the rods. So again, just checking the centre of the uh, wheel where it joins the axle to make sure that there's no sign of movement here. The pressure is on. Tornado needs to be in the form of its life. We're very confident that this engine will, uh, will meet the challenge without a problem. Three days from now, the team will attempt a 100 miles per hour run. No one has uh, driven a steam engine at 100 miles an hour in this country since 1967. We are moving into a, an environment where we are asking people to do something that they've been trained for but they haven't physically done. It will be a test of man and machine. And while it has all the hallmarks of a thrilling tale from an adventure annual, there is a serious point. Tornado's bread and butter living is made by running excursion trains around the country. Thousands rode behind it when it stormed along the roof of England on the Settle to Carlisle Railway. We have since the uh, back end of the last century run steam at 75 miles an hour, but as uh, people will be aware, the rail network has got busier and busier and busier. There are more fast express trains, there are more commuter trains, there are more freight trains. At 75 miles an hour, with the fact that steam doesn't accelerate as fast as uh, a modern electric train, we are starting to run out of places that we can run the loco and to make it commercially viable. It costs hundreds of thousands of pounds to run Tornado every year. It's essential they can please passengers and still fit around other trains. A plan has been devised to prove Tornado can run regularly at up to 90 miles per hour. Starting from Doncaster, the loco will haul a test train up the East Coast Main Line, pausing at York to take on water. Then they'll press on northwards, steadily increasing their top speed to hit 90. Just outside of Newcastle, they'll stop and examine everything, making sure Tornado is running perfectly. After turning round, they'll dash south, with permission to try for 100 miles per hour. This is part of a test to show Tornado is safe, even when exceeding the speed limit. If we want to run regularly at 90 miles an hour, we need to show that the locomotive operates satisfactorily 10% over that speed. It's 99, but the point of 100 came from Network Rail, whose comment was, uh, if we're going to authorise you at 99, we should authorise you at 100 mile an hour and not leave you like a batsman at the crease. The Tornado story itself is remarkable. Every original locomotive of its type was scrapped. This left a gap in the family tree of East Coast mainline motive power. To fill it, a group of enthusiasts clubbed together to build a brand new one. Top this side up again. Working from a converted carriage shed in Darlington, they spent 18 years machining and making the parts. 
By the time the last bolts were tightened in 2008, the bill came to £3 million. But their efforts were rewarded, as the first new steam engine built for Britain's main line since 1960, it certainly caught the imagination. This engine is named Tornado, and may God bless all who are lucky enough to locomote behind her. Since then it has become a steam star, but to keep its place on the East Coast Line, running faster is essential. And back in Doncaster, Tornado won't be going anywhere unless it passes the crucial fitness to run examination. Every tap tells a story. Every cranny could conceal a show-stopping problem. Hugh faces an anxious wait. We've got an independent uh, examiner from DB Cargo, our train operating company, um, who is auditing our own engineering procedures. So I've got my own engineer going around the engine, making sure that everything is safe and secure. We check all the pins for security, check all the split pins are there, all secure. There's no loose legs, there's nothing loose. 36 hours before the run, everything needs to work perfectly. I'm beginning to feel happier. <laughs> And out of sight can't mean out of mind. The locomotive is reversed over an inspection pit. We've got the three sets of valve gear and connecting rods. So on the outside, we've already examined them. This is the middle big end. So that's flying around at a fair speed in here, really. So we want to make sure that the nuts and the split pins are in place for those as well, really. The inspection lasts for most of the day. Eventually, though, they have in their hands a piece of paper. Steam and speed in our time. Tornado is good to go. This is all about confirming that the locomotive is safe and in a fit condition to be running on the main line. Um, and uh, yeah, we're all quite excited and looking forward to having a crack at that 90 mile an hour on Tuesday night. We are going into an element we've never had the loco at that speed. So as much as we can predict what it will do and we can measure what it will do, we don't know for sure. So this is where there's an element of um, excitement, but also caution. As Tornado accelerates, air will be drawn faster across the fire, making it burn hotter. The fireman will need to feed it faster to keep the boiler pressure up and make enough steam. The driver will need plenty of power at his disposal. But as the metalwork moves ever faster, if anything overheats, it's game over. The lubrication systems are absolutely critical. This is a five-figure endeavour. If you take into account all the money we've spent so far on getting here ready to do the test, it's a six-figure endeavour. So we have, you know, we have to succeed. Going further, faster, has been a recurring theme through railway history. The legends slumber in the Great Hall of the National Railway Museum, but before them all came Rocket. As soon as Rocket wins the Rainhill Trials, speed becomes a major ingredient. People want to travel places. The railway gives you the ability to move long distances, but you don't want to spend forever doing it. And especially in third class as there were then, you know, it's quite an uncomfortable thing. So improving the journey time is really important. A century later, speed was the epitome of railway endeavour. In 1934, Flying Scotsman was the first locomotive to be officially driven at 100 miles per hour. Four years later, the world steam speed record was set by Mallard at 126 miles per hour. It has never been beaten. This is where we turn speed from a phenomenon for people into a science. A rolling laboratory called a dynamometer car was used to record accurate performance data for the first time. There's an umbilical cord between the locomotive and this car that's feeding back all sorts of variables. You need to understand what's going on, whether it's the track that you need to improve to make the train go faster, the braking, that's also something that was measured in this thing, the, the, the ability of the train to slow down from speed to stop. But despite the advances, by the late 60s, steam was done, swept away by modernisation. Fastest train in Britain, the Bristolian at times exceeds 100 miles an hour. It's sad to think that superb locomotives of the King and Coronation class must be superseded. 
Drivers who know their ways and moods as if the engines lived are loath to bid them goodbye. Southern region in 1967, there were numerous occasions where bully Pacifics were clocked at 100 miles an hour plus because they wanted to go out in a blaze of glory and the timings allowed them to do so. To prove steam can still cut it at speed, the obsession with measuring continues. A tornado is being cabled up like a moon rocket. These are the accelerometers, so that's measuring vertical loads, and that one there is measuring lat lateral loads. Stability matters. Tornado will naturally move from side to side, but too much, and that's known as rough riding. It might be the track, or it could be a problem with the loco. Meanwhile, the wheels and the rods which connect them will reinforce downwards, just like the blow of a huge hammer. We've been able to balance Tornado much more thoroughly than any other steam engine's ever been able to be done. And that means that Tornado at 90 miles an hour produces less hammer blow than an A4, such as world record holder Mallard, at 75 miles an hour. But we also have to look at, this is nearly 170 tonnes of loco. When it arrives onto a bridge, the deflection forces and so on are very important indeed. As the vehicle moves up and down, the accelerometers actually measure the G-forces. So you've got one G, that's one G upwards against gravity. So at that point, you're in free space. So if we get into that sort of situation, there's a possibility the vehicle might become unstable and actually want to jump off the track. So that's a no-no, obviously, but as part of the safety process, we have to go through the, the criteria to make sure that it's safe to operate and it doesn't actually uh, exceed those levels. The data gathered on the test might help other steam engines run faster in future too. And the heritage world is watching. Steam Railway magazine are holding their presses, hoping to be first with history. This is really the big story, isn't it? So we, we can't really underplay it. Reporter Tony Streeter will join the train, writing his copy on the move. I've written about these things now for the best part of 20 years. Um, never done anything quite like this. I cannot think of another locomotive anywhere in the world, another steam locomotive anywhere in the world, that will regularly run at 90 miles an hour. Yes, I think it will make it the fastest in the world, at least on a regular basis. Green, main line. But the East Coast main line is faster still. The modern electrics have a top speed of 125 miles per hour. Even at a special one-off ton, let alone the new planned maximum of 90, Tornado will be outpaced. At Network Rail's London headquarters, word of the test train has reached the very top. The railway is the heart of the British economy. It creates economic growth, it creates jobs and it creates houses. Um, and people have to travel in order to do that. But that's travel through necessity and we would like people to also uh, kindle their emotional and romantic side and actually feel that the railway is, is for them and that they're connected with it and there's nothing like a steam locomotive to do that. If you're old like me, you remember them uh, when, when you were young. If you're not old like me, it's just something quite extraordinary when you see a steam locomotive passing by. That engine's now ready. All the maintenance is done, all the preparation is done. We just need to get out there now. The time has come to hand over the Star Act to the train operating company DB Cargo. The only thing now is uh, waiting for the train crew and then we... You know, we An experienced footplate crew has been hand-picked to meet the challenge. Everything is going much faster, things happen more quickly, so their reactions are probably going to have to be quicker. Um, they're going to have to react to how the engine's performing, what it's demanding of them. The run is taking place at night. The railway isn't as busy then, but it's also being kept a secret, so there isn't a problem with crowds of onlookers. We'll see how we do going north. We might run without the diesel on the back. Uh, as the gloom gathers, the whole team comes together for a last briefing. Any questions? Excellent, that is the correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, guys. Uh, Jim, are you all right, mate? Good. You all right? And then the men of the hour arrive, the footplate crew. Ahead of them, 230 miles of high speed running into the night, and behind them, a tender full of eight tonnes of coal. Uh, it's a bit special. Uh, yeah, it should be good though. We'll just see what we can do with it. I think no problem there. I can't see any problems, you know. A moment years in the making has finally arrived. <laughs>